against the winds of doubt Expecting things from above and wanting now Seek you first the kingdom of God And all these things will be added unto you The flesh is weak and causes men to stray. The world of treasures take hold of you. Take the hope of you. We'll turn the wisest man into a fool. Walk down the narrow way and walk the him every day and don't look back. Don't let material things keep you from going away when he comes back. We know that living life on sure is wasting time. See, Lord. The door will be open unto you. Ooh. You gotta walk down the narrow way and follow your every day and don't look back. Don't let material things keep you from going away when he comes back.
One more thing I want to tell you. Y'all ain't gonna believe this now. Listen, some folks don't go to church on Sunday morning. Stay at home. Some even go fishing. Oh, they don't know. On Sunday morning, they just don't know. Just what they're missing. Bless the Lord on my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord on my soul, 
and forget not all his benefits, who heals us from all of our iniquities, who purges us from all of our sins. Once again, the God in heaven truly has been good to us. And we are thankful for this another day that God has blessed us to be in his presence. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to the 20th Street Church of Christ live streaming worship service. And we pray that you will be watching, that you will be joining us as we all come together to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. Those that are in the audience as you walk into the building, into the sanctuary, we encourage you to please get you a, a communion package. And if God has been good to you that you want to put something in the collection plate, please lay your lay by in the collection plate as well as you walk in. We believe that God has been too good to us not to be good to God. God is good, not some of the time, but all the time God is good. Now I heard on the calendar, I don't know about all of y'all, but I heard on the calendar that we have what we call Grandparent Day. This is Grandparents Day. Did y'all know that? It's Grandparents Day. And for some reason or another, some of the, uh, the members of the congregation, they don't miss nothing but my, anyway. But uh, it's Grandparents Day. It's Grandparents Day. And so they are, uh, uh, the women of faith and, and the, uh, and the youth committee has gotten together and uh, they are going to give us a treat after the morning worship service. So they have a treat for the grandparents, for the grandparents. So, so please make sure you stop by uh, the table. I'm quite sure it's out there in the foyer. I don't see Sister Lawana in here right now, so I guess she's out there along with uh, some of the members uh, from the youth working on that. Now, uh, please, they have plenty. I saw them yesterday as they was here preparing things. They have plenty. Now, for those that do not have, so I say, I don't have any grandkids. I don't have any grandkids. Well, get one of my cupcakes. I got about five or six of them. Uh, you can have, they, they, say, they say, we give it. Oh, you want mine? Oh, my, isn't that sweet? Oh, no, that, okay, you're going to get one because I think Brother and Sister Floyd, gonna, uh, they're going to own you today, okay? Yeah, brother, sister, Floyd. Okay, but we, but uh, don't, don't, uh, uh, but make sure, make sure you uh, get the treat that they have uh, prepared for you. And let's also let's let's continue to remember uh, those that are sick and shut in among us. Uh, we had a number of funerals on last week, and we just pray that God's blessing will uh, be upon us as we try our very best to uh, take care of those that are sick and shut in among us. So once again, we want to thank you so very, very much for being with us this morning, and we just pray that you have come to worship God in spirit and in truth. So at this time, we are about to begin our morning worship service. Brother Floyd, one of the elders here, is going to come forward, and he's going to lead us in a word of prayer. Let's begin morning worship. Now, let us all go to God. This is a privilege. And I'm telling you, it's a great privilege. We can all go to our Father and be heard. So let us all together bow and go to our Father. Righteous Father God in heaven, Lord God, you've been so good to every one of us. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord, with a pure heart saying thank you, Lord, for doing everything, everything. You had to, you on the job 24 hours a day. Lord, you watched over us from our birth, and Lord, we're sitting here enjoying the fruits of your gifts. You are a wonderful Father, a good God. And we come, Lord, praying today in thanks, and we say to you, most of all, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Jesus, Lord, you gave us the victory through Jesus, showing how much you love us, Lord. You gave your son for us in our place that we now may have the hope of eternal life. Thank you for Jesus, who have led by example. We are following his example. We are following his footsteps. 
Help us, Lord, to be strong in these times that we, we're going through some perilous times. And Lord, we need you. We need your word. We need your spirit. We need each other. And Lord, that's what you have taught us. We should never forget that you bonded us, bound us together so that we can strengthen each other, exhort each other, edify each other, and comfort each other. Lord, we, we, we need you and we need each other. We need you to keep us remembering who we are now. Who we are now. We're the children of God. We're the assembly of God. Lord, and you love us, Lord. And all you ask of us is to live righteously under your word on this earth. Bless the congregation. Bless every single member, wherever they are. We know you know where they are. They're in many different places, Lord. And some of them not good. But we want you to be there with them, protect them, watch over them, care for them. Help each and every one of us, Lord, to be good fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. And Lord, most of all, disciples of Christ, Christians, which to me, Lord, and all of us should know, is the greatest thing that has ever happened, that you can be a Christian, a disciple of Christ. And one day you want to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on up. Lord, we all want to hear that. Bless us. Keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning, 20th Street. Let's be turning your red books to number 666. Jesus is coming soon. I don't know why you're playing, because Jesus is coming soon. I appreciate Brother Floyd's prayer this morning. We, should, we, we, we just shouldn't take for granted the privilege that we have to be able to go to God and to even be in the Lord's house with the Lord's people on the Lord's day, doing what the Lord has commanded us to do. And number 666. Trouble sometimes are here, healing in hard with the freedom we all hold in. Now is that stay on with your heart to God, stay from the task, stay from the seat the way, pilgrims pure, pure, start, Christians are away. My Jesus.
Our example is Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Right. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Yes. Let us give thanks for the bread. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, once again we approach that dawn of grace. We thank you for this bread that we're about to receive. Do pray, Heavenly Father, that as we be partakers of it, that remember your Son's body. It was given that we might have everlasting life with you. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may partake of the bread. In continuation with 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 throughout 29. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Mm -hmm. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till ye come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Again, let us give thanks for the cup. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, once again we approach that throne of grace. We thank you for this cup that we're about to receive. Do pray that as we be partakers of it, we will do so in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable in that sight, and that we remember your son's blood that was given for the forgiveness of our sins. Yes. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may partake of the cup. This concludes our memorial feast, the Lord's Supper. Let us remember that God loved us so much that he was willing for his son to die, that our sins might be forgiven and we have everlasting life with him. Yes. Let us prepare for giving. Acts, uh, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by and store him, as God has purposed him, that there be no gathering when I come. Let us give thanks. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, once again we approach that throne of grace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this collection. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege that you give us, Heavenly Father, to go out and earn a living, and we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion of that that you have blessed us with. Yeah. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we pray sure that we pray that we have given as we have prospered. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 Number 356. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, what an evil wonderful end. And in the troubles and care of the sorry land, what an evil wonderful Oh, the Lord, and what an evil wonderful end. Yes, we'll have no burden to bear. We will be joyous with singing with heartfelt heart ring. Oh, 
gospel. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who heals us from all of our iniquities. Who purges us from all of our sin. Once again, God truly has been good to us. And the Lord has smiled upon us this morning. Blessed us to be in his presence. And I don't know about you, but I feel like David felt. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. What a wonderful day it is to be in the house of God. What a wonderful privilege it is to come together and worship a God that is alive. And a God that's been so mighty good to us. And the psalmist say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. When you stand and sing, you got to know God is God. And when you know God is God, you can sing, you can pray, you can worship him as he is our God. And he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Brother Crosby. Thank you for leading us this morning in the song service. I need to invite your attention this morning to the gospel according to Luke. The gospel according to Luke in chapter 16. And I want you to be standing for the reading of God's word. And I want you to keep your hand. You may have your finger there in your Bible. If you got your Bible or your tablet, uh, put your finger there. But I'm going to need you to look at the monitor uh, this morning to make sure that we are not just spending money. But are you, going, you are going to look at the monitor because... I want to read this morning from the C.E.V. translation. I'm going to preach from the King James, but I want to read from the C.E.V. And this is the contemporary English version. And since you don't have that version, I'm going to ask you to look at the monitor as I read uh, the scriptural text for uh, this morning. Right. Something else I need to qualify. I'm only reading uh, these uh, verses of scripture because I'm probably going to be dealing with uh, this particular text at least for the next four weeks. I'm entering another theme and that I'm going to be sharing with the church. So uh, yeah, and that's the only reason I'm going to read the number of verses uh, this morning. But the gospel according to Luke uh, chapter 16, CEV, verse number one, Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man once had a manager to take care of his business, but he was told that his manager was wasting money. So the rich man called him in. And said, what is this I hear about you? Tell me what you have done. You are no longer going to work for me. The manager said to himself, if I can't work for you, what shall I do now? That my master is going to fire me. I can't dig ditches. And I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. So that people will welcome me into their homes after I have lost my job. All right. Then one by one he called in the people who were in debt to his master. He asked the first one, how much do you owe my master? All right. He said a hundred barrels of olive oil. The man answered. So the manager said, take your bill and sit down and quickly write 50 before I change my mind. 
The manager asked someone else who was in debt to his master, how much do you owe? And he said, a thousand bushel of wheat. The man replied, the manager said, take your bill and write 800. Do it quickly. Oh, I changed. The master prays. The master, the rich man, prays his dishonest manager for looking out for himself so well. He said, that's how it is. The people of this world look out for themselves better than the people who belong to the light. My disciples, I, I tell you to use wicked wealth to make friends for yourselves. Then when it is gone, you will be welcome into an eternal home. And anyone who can be trusted in little matters can also be trusted in important matters. But anyone who is dishonest in little matters will be dishonest in important matters. If you cannot be trusted with this wicked wealth, wealth who will trust you with true wealth? And if you cannot be trusted with what belongs to someone else, who will give you something that will one day be your own? You cannot be the slaves of two masters. You will lack one more than the other or be loyal to one than to the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees really love money. So when they heard what Jesus said, they made fun of him. I read until you're here. Let me get to that. Yeah. But Jesus told them, verse number 15, but Jesus told them, you are already making yourself look good. But God sees what is in your heart. The things that most people think are important are worthless as far as God is concerned. You may be seated. Now I need you to turn, uh, you already did, the gospel according to Luke. And I'm going to deal this morning with three verses. As I've already said, I'm going to be doing a series of lessons. And uh, last month, or the last four Sundays, I dealt, I felt this door with an important thing, and that was forgiveness. I don't know whether or not you were helped with that thing. It falls under the category better me, better 2021. If you can learn how to forgive, I believe that you'll be better for it. And I also believe 2021 will be better as well. Amen. Talked about forgiveness. If it wasn't good to you, it sure was good to me. Because I, I learned from forgiveness is that my salvation does not hinge on whether or not you forgive me. My salvation hinges not whether or not you like me or don't like me. But guess what? Your salvation hinges on whether or not you forgive me. Talked about that last month or so. And if you did not get the memo or you did not get the message uh, just roll back on Facebook and, and check out those lessons All right. 
So this morning I'm starting a series on something that all of us deal with. And that is money. I don't know when I talk about money. I don't know when I share that much about forgiveness. But I want to talk about money for the next four weeks. I'm going to talk about money. Luke chapter 16, verse 1, 2, and 3. And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him, said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give me an account of thou stewardship. For thou mayest no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship, and I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed. I want to talk about money. And in talking about money, I want to ask the question. Got any money? All right. That's my subject. Got any money? Got any money? We work. To have money. Got any money? We invest to have money. Got any money? We lie to have money. Got any money? We sell our body to get some money. Got any money? We will embarrass ourselves for money. Got any money? We will kill for money. Got any money? We will fight for money. Got any money? We will steal. For money. Yes, sir. Got any money? To many of us, and we have been taught as Christians to believe that money is a bad thing. All right. But most of us want it. Most of us got it. All right. For the less money some of us believe, that we have the humble, the humblest you can be. But I know some folks that broke at Job's turkey and still ain't humble. Right. <laughs> For the less money that you have, the better chance that you have of getting into hell. All right. Yet there are people that still find it difficult to get into heaven even without money. Bible says that Job was a rich man. Yes, sir. And if you read your Bible, not only was Job rich, but Abraham was rich as well. Yes, sir. Job was a rich man, but yet the Bible said that Job was one of the greatest of all odds because Job was one that feared God even though God had been good to Job. Job still had his perspective of God in the right place. Amen. But yet Jesus says here this morning in his word. In Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 16 rather, in verse number 8 Jesus says here, And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. 
For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourself friends of the matter of unrighteousness. That when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. The Bible says that he didn't say worship money now. He didn't say worship money. But he said make friends with money. Make friends with mammal, which is investment, which, which is debt of value. I'm talking make friends with it. He didn't say love it. He said make yourself friends to it. Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money, Brother Washington, as we talked about, is not evil, it's not wrong, it's just the love of it. The love of money. We got to do what? We got to love God more than we love mama, daddy, uncle, auntie, sister, brother, even more than we love ourselves. We got to love the Lord our God. With all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, with all of our strength. But Paul say that the love of money is the root of all evil. He did not say do not have money. He did not say do not use money. But he says friend yourself. He commended them because he said make yourself friend to mammon. Of unrighteousness. Right. Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some covet after. They have erred from the faith. Right. And have pierced themselves through with sorrow. Have got any money? The love of money is not the only thing that will cause you to leave the faith. Paul say the love of money yes, sir. is the root of all evil. That have caused many to leave the faith and they have erred from the word and have pierced themselves. But the love of money is not the only thing that will cause people to give up on God. It's not the only thing that will cause people to leave God. Solomon said wine will cause you to leave the faith. Solomon said that the love of women will cause you to leave the faith. John said the lust of the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life will cause you to leave the faith. Anybody got any money? He didn't talk about money. He didn't say don't have money. He didn't say that the worst work. He, he didn't say don't work, don't, don't, don't work for money. He said don't have a love for money. Right. But he that won't work won't have any money. Right. Now the Bible says that if a man won't work, right. neither should he eat. He didn't say don't work. If you don't work for money, you probably won't have any money. And if you don't spend money, you probably won't have any money. You don't save money, you probably won't have any money. He that is not wise with money will not have money long. You got money. But everybody is not wise with money. And Jesus says some of the poorest people Managing money is us. And I don't mean us in black folks. I mean us in Christians. Is that we have a hard time knowing how to manage money. Knowing how to be wise with money. Because 
because if you're not wise in your own house with money, you're probably not wise in God's house. God says, if a man can't take care of his own house, how can he take care of the house of God? And Jesus, look at here, because I don't want y'all to think I'm talking about you. I, I want you to see what Jesus said. Jesus says here in Luke chapter 16 and verse number 8, And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Let me, let me ask the question. Let me, let me ask the question. Why was this unjust man unjust? Why did God call him unjust? Y'all got an idea? Why God called him unjust? You don't have to have too much ideas. You can just read the Bible. He was unjust. Because he wasted the rich man's money. Why would God call us unjust? He calls us unjust if they call we waste God's money. Let, 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 I'm, I'm gonna come back to that. I just want y'all. I want y'all to so because I'm gonna. I'm gonna share with y'all. I'm gonna share with y'all why he's unjust. But the first thing I want y'all to see in this text, I, I'm only gonna have a chance to do deal with two points in this lesson. Two points. Who does it belongs to? Got any money? Who does it belong to? Our spirit, our attitude is going to have to be correct. Right. It's going to have to be right if we're going to get wise in this matter of dealing with money. Right. Because if we don't know who it belongs to, right. we can get a spirit or an attitude that I know what I'm doing because it's mine. And I can deal with my money any kind of way I want to deal with it. Look at the text. Look at the text. I, I got to deal with this. The first point, just in case I don't get to it, you'll know I'm getting close to it. Number one is who, who does it belong to? That's good, brother. Who does it belong to? Number two, how does God want me to use it? How to use it? Who does it belong to? Look at the Bible here. In Luke chapter 16, verse number 1. And he said unto his disciples, he's not just talking to people of the world, he said unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. He called him unto him. Who did it belong to? Who did this money belong to? It belonged to the rich man. Yes, sir. In this text, it belongs to the rich man. Right. But who is who? The money and what we have, who does it belong to, y'all? Right. God. I'm talking, whatever we have, it belongs to God. Amen. Everything we got belongs to God. Our body belongs to God. Our mind belongs to God. The money that we have in our pocket belongs to God. Everything that we own. And as a matter of fact, we don't own any of it. All of it belongs to God. As a matter of fact, we own the stewards. We own the steward with this. And I'm telling you, if you get that understanding, I'm telling you, we're gonna, this, this lesson is going to be helpful to you. If we can all understand that when we leave here, is that all of us are stewards. 
over something that God has allowed us to have and to manage. It don't belong to us. He just allowed us to manage it. Jesus says to his disciple, he called his disciple. The parable is given to us, uh, his disciple. There was a certain rich man. The rich man here is Jesus. The rich man here is God. God is rich. God is rich. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 50 verse number 10. God is rich. Psalm 50 and verse number 10. For every beast of the field is mine. And the cattle upon the thousand hills, they are mine. Verse number 11. I know all that the fowls of the mountain and the wild beasts of the fields are mine. If I was hungry, I would not tell thee, for the wild is mine and the fullness thereof. God is rich and God owns everything. Everything belongs to God. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 32. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 32. And the, and, and the early church, they had the right spirit. They had the right attitude. That's why they didn't have any problem giving what belongs to God to somebody else. Listen to the Bible. And the multitude of them that believed were a one heart and a one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own. They knew that what God had given them to take over and to manage, they knew it did not belong to them. See, the reason that we have a hard time giving anything is because we think it's ours. Oh, boy, I tell you, Brother Washington, this is so good, I wish I could jump to the good part. And this ain't even good yet. The first thing that we need to understand about the proper attitude of money and the proper attitude of giving is that we are just stewards of it. We're just managers of it. It don't, I, when you get on an airplane, the, the steward will tell you to sit here and to sit there. The plane don't belong to them. It belongs to Delta or whoever, but it don't belong to them. Although they are called steward, and what you got in your pocket don't belong to you. Amen. What you got in your head don't belong to you. Amen. Your body that you are putting crack cocaine in and cigarette and whack Daniel on. Y'all, y'all, y'all help me out. I haven't taken a, a snap. It don't belong to you. Our bodies are the temple of God that God has given us that our spirit may have a place to dwell. First thing that we need to understand, we need to understand who does it belong to? Who does it belong to? Got any money? Who does it belong to? Got it in money? Who does it belong? Psalms 24. Psalms 24 and verse number 1. Psalm 24. The Bible says the earth is the Lord. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein belongs to God. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. The earth is the Lord. The people is the Lord. They belong to God. We are stewards. Oh boy, my time is up already, y'all. We are stewards of God's money. Hello, somebody. We are stewards of God's money. You are walking around here in God's suit. Walking around with God's money in your pocket. And if you got any sense, you're walking around with God's sense. We are stewards. And this, and this steward understood that 
what he had was not his. It was the rich man. But the rich man called the steward to give an account of what he had because he found out that the steward was mismanaging his money. He was wasting it. Oh Lord, let me, let, let me, y'all, I, I got to go, y'all. I, I said, oh no, I'm, I'm going to let y'all come back. I thought, at least y'all knew I got my lesson. We are stewards of God. We are stewards of God's money. We are to manage God's money. We have already proven that it's not ours. Nothing that, that we have belongs to us. Yes, God told me to take care of my wife. But guess what? And that's, that's just a wife that the Lord is allowing me to borrow. That's God's wife. I'm God's, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. None of us belong to one another. Everything about us belongs to God. Let me, let me get this thing here together. I have a house, I have a wife, I have a husband, I have a children. Our children don't belong to us. And somebody say, I wish God come get, they don't belong to us. The church, oh Lord have mercy. You got to be careful, the church don't belong to us. The church is not my church. The church is not the elder's church. The church is not the deacon's church. The church belongs to Christ. The church belongs to God. Jesus said, I'm on this rock, I will build my church. And it doesn't matter how long we stay in the church. It doesn't matter what kind of title or position we give you. It still ain't yours. And if I don't say it that, and if I got that clear, if the church ain't yours, the money ain't yours. The money don't belong to the elders. It don't belong to the deacon. It doesn't belong to the preacher. The money belongs to God. But what God wants us to do, he wants us to manage his money wisely. Let me, let, me, let me just share this here. We are stewards of it. What is a steward? A steward is one who looks after something that belongs to another. Let, let, me, let me say that again. We are stewards of it. What is a steward? A steward is one who looks after something that belongs to another. One who attends to something of another. You always hear a man, man say, don't lose your life over something that don't belong to you. You remember how they get ready to go rob the bank and, and then you always got a hero over there? And so I whistle to you, do what they say. That money don't belong to you, that belongs to the bank. And how many of us are losing our soul over something that don't even belong to us? We want to keep something. We want to hang on to something. We want to be tight with something. And it don't even belong to us. Don't even belong to us. When you take, see when you, see when you, see you got to understand this here. When you take from me, you're taking from me that don't even, something that don't even belong to me. I tell you, I take it, you know, that's like taking, taking food out of my mouth. You're taking something from me that don't even belong to me. And how can you take something from me that doesn't even belong to me? And if it doesn't belong to me, guess what, y'all? Even when you take it from me, 
Somebody got it that it don't belong to them neither. I'm going to go ahead and close. I know y'all don't believe this. It's, it's all my time is up, y'all. But this is this, this lesson, y'all. Now, this lesson. Let me just share this here. Why was he unjust? He was unjust because he was not wise enough to manage God's money. He wasted God's money. God called, see here, see, what it is, what, what it is is that, see, we think that people are only unjust with God when they steal God's money. <laughs> see, that's what we think. Not understanding that our thoughts are not God's thoughts. Our ways are not God's ways. For as the heavens are higher than earth, so are God's ways higher than, than your ways. Okay, this man was brought before God is because this man did not know how to manage God's money. He did not know how to manage the rich man's money. And God called him unjust. All right. let, me, let, me, let, me, let me share. Come, come here, come here. Y'all remember when, and in Matthew chapter 25, when God gave the talents? Yes, sir. Yes. He gave one five. Yes. He gave one two. Yes. And he gave one one. He said to the one that had five, because he managed it well, he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The one that had two, he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant, because he managed God's money well. But to the one that had one, he buried it. He wasted it. And when he wasted it, Sister Hollis, you know what God called him? A wicked and a slothful servant. See, we think that you can only be wicked and unjust if you're going around stealing. But God say you are wicked and you are unjust if you don't know how to manage my money. If you're not using any wisdom in it. If you're not wise. And once again, let me just let me just say this here to you. Is that just because you handle money, don't mean that you're wise with it. Just because you write a check and you know how to write a check, don't mean that you're wise in it. Lord's willing next Sunday. I'm going to be sharing the part two of this lesson. And the way this lesson is going, I may be on this thing eight weeks. I've full been done two parts today and I only got to one. But next week I'm going to be talking about now, since I know that it don't belong to me, God wants us to know, I'm going to be sharing with you, how do I use it then? How do I use this which don't belong to me? And he used that wicked man, that wicked, unjust servant to teach his people how to use his money. He was, I'm tired, he was not unjust. He was not on, he was not wicked. He was not evil because he was stealing and taking it. Right. He was wicked and evil and unjust because he was wasting it. And sometimes, let, let, me, let me just share with y'all. And I, I, want, I want to get into this here so badly, I just can't get in here. But so many of us waste God's money. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I want to talk about it so bad, I ain't got time, y'all. 
want to talk about it so bad about food that we're throwing away. Amen. How we waste it. And God is going to call us to account. You're not wise enough. Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. And for those of us that believe that we don't need any help, I'm here to tell you, you the main one need it. That's the rough part. That's the tough part. Yes, it's because God has made us stewards. Right. Amen. Brother Smith is a steward here at this church. Amen. The elders are stewards of the church. And we are going to have to learn how to be wise. Somebody said, we already there. If we were already there, I probably wouldn't be teach, preaching this lesson. <laughs> we ain't there. Amen. And just like we ain't there, y'all ain't there. Because guess what? Y'all can't be something that you, that first of all, mom and dad hadn't taught us to be. Lord, help us. I, I want to say this to my wife, got to get on me and stuff. My wife had me last night to look at uh, Aretha Franklin. All right. Respect. And you know, it's amazing how you can make yourself look good. When I got through looking at that movie, because I want to tell y'all, I said, let me go read up on her life. And anybody can look the part. But being the part. Is what God wants us to be. Amen. We can look like we're wise. We can look like we know what we're doing with it. And God can call us. Let me finish y'all. There may be someone here this morning. God bless us. I started doing this lesson. I couldn't put it, brother, brother, I couldn't put it down. And end up getting five to six weeks out of this text. got any money and if you got any money who does it belong to you got any money what does God want you to do with it <laughs> okay somebody don't say something over there she ain't even preaching yet if you're here this morning you're not in Christ Believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You're not a member of the body of Christ. Believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Repent of your sin. Confess before this audience that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Go down into the water grave of baptism, and this is for the remission of your sin. You're a member of the church. You're a Christian, a child of God, and you need to get right with God. You need to have your relationship stronger with God than what it is. We encourage you to do so. Those that are watching us online, please get in contact with us. If this message has helped you, if this message has touched you in such a way, please get in contact with us. Text us or whatever you can do that we may be able to get, to get with you, that we may teach you more perfectly God's will and God's way. So at this time, we're signing off to those online. And those that are in the audience, if you need to stand, you can stand at this time. Anybody in the audience? Thank you.